Hey my beautiful bitches, it's me, Fiona St. James, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Fiona's Coffee Talks. Thanks so much again for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, Fiona's Coffee Talks. And as always, I like to start off my morning with a hot black cup of coffee. Hold the cream! I'd love to. <laughs> mm. Oh my God, that's good. Coffee with a little splash of Kahlua in my all-time favorite coffee mug with my favorite quote of all times by Oscar Wilde. Life is too important to be taken seriously. So lighten up, folks. Life can't be that bad. And in a minute, it's over before you know it. So let's have fun with it. Okay, so today's topic is I want to talk about being an actor slash actress. So I have been a proud member of Screen Actors Guild and AFTA for over 25 years. A uh, little bit of my background, I started performing as a teenager. I was doing community theater in the Bronx where I grew up. Uh, I was a theater dance major in college. And so once I graduated college, I thought, okay, well, let me try to make it as a dancer. And I would, you know, get, get my little industrials and try the whole modern dance world and all of that. And, you know, taking my dance classes. And I ultimately wanted to get my equity card. So being on Broadway was my ultimate dream. That, of course, never happened. However, in 1993, I met B. Van Kidron, who at the time had uh, directed a movie called Use People. Uh, she, at that time, was doing a documentary called Hookers, Hustlers, Pimps, and Their Johns. And, you know, I had been doing massage and escort work for a while at that point. I was like pretty much phasing out of it, uh, but through a mutual friend, a uh, friend asked a friend of mine, oh, do you know anyone who's in the industry? And he was like, yeah, well, my friend Fiona. So I ended up meeting B. Van as she met me and wanted me to be part of her documentary and mentioned to me that she would be the following year filming Too Long Food Thanks to Everything Julie Newmar, Steven Spielberg production. So, you know, I did the documentary because I wanted to give my two cents on that industry and, you know, break that whole stereotype that if you do it, it's because you messed up or you come from a broken home. No, I did it because I like money and I like yeah, being with people, frankly. <laughs> so I did the documentary and true to her word, I went through the whole audition process, got the part, and I was one of the featured LA dancers at the end of the movie. Uh, we were hired as featured dancers, but when we actually got our paycheck, they paid us as day players, which was amazing because that made me automatically eligible to join the union. So I immediately joined Screen Actors Guild and separately after, because at the time they were separate unions, not anymore, but they were back then. And uh, then the second thing I did was I got a good part in the movie Stonewall, the original Stonewall, which we shot in 1994. And then I worked on that for like a good solid month. So I was like, wow, this is like really great. I'm in the union, the first two parts that I had were as Fiona, and you know, when you're when you're in drag, of course, you, you get treated like a queen, no pun intended. Uh, then it was interesting because then the third thing that I did was actual background work on the show Law and Order. And I remember that feeling of, oh my God, I went from like doing these two like, you know, big high profile things to then suddenly like, you know, being in the background as a pedestrian and then saying, okay, action. And, like crossing the street from one side to the other. And I was like, wow, talk about being knocked down a few notches. But you know what? I was in the union, I was making money, and, and I was happy to be working. Uh, you know, since then, I've, I've done a lot of things. Uh, I think the, the one most memorable thing, and in my opinion, the most amazing experience for me was working on the HBO series Oz. Uh, I was on that for all six seasons. I played the resident tranny. So I was kind of like the prison bitch. And I was technically a non-speaking part, but I was a glorified extra, as I'd like to say. But, you know, I was part of the Emerald City group. So we were core, which is a term that we use in the industry if you're part of like the core group of the, the SETI background. So, I mean, I, 
Camera definitely loves a drag queen, so I was featured a lot. I was given dialogue a few times, and anyone who watches the show religiously knows who I am. Uh, so th that was incredible. I met a lot of wonderful people. You know, a lot of people got their start on that show, and uh, Tom Fontana, who's the executive producer, good friends with Dick Wolf, who's the executive producer of all of the Law and Order shows. That's why you see there's a lot of people that were on Oz that ended up on those shows. Uh, and I've done a whole host of other things since. I was on Ugly Betty. Uh, and right when I got that part, the show was like canceled the following week. I did my first news scene in Orange is the New Black. And even if it's just background work, you know, I, I tend, I shouldn't say just because we are background artists and we add to the entire production of it all. Uh, this past summer, I was quite busy. I worked all summer on both In the Heights, the movie version of In the Heights, and then also uh, the remake of the movie version of West Side Story, directed by Steven Spielberg. So those two productions kept me busy the entire summer. So suddenly being Hispanic in New York City paid off. Uh, so I, I was quite happy about that. Long hours, it was lucrative. You know, it kept me busy. All that wonderful stuff. So I, I'm curious for my viewers that are listening to this, like, you know, when did you first know that you even wanted to be an actor? I mean, for me, I was always a musical theater queen, and that's really what I wanted to do because it encompasses all three. And I sort of accidentally fell into Screen Actors Guild and realized, wow, okay, I can make money just on the acting, you know, without the other two things. But you know, what, what was, it, was, was it always a dream? You know, how easy was it for you to get into the union? I am not going with, was fortunate that I, I got in rather quickly and without even really necessarily trying, for lack of a better term. But uh, I, I've been fortunate that I've had success in that. And, you know, the work is out there when you want it. It's, you know, there's a lot of us competing for, yeah, if it's just back, if it's not just, but if it's background work, there's a lot of people vying for those spots. But, you know, just keep your karma good and, and you'll get it and really want it. So tell me your story, you know, ask questions, leave in the comments, you know, are you in the union? How long did it take you to get in? Was it easy? Do you love it? Do you, you know, do you get nervous? Uh, but I know I sometimes still do, even though I've been in show business my whole life, even doing these little videos, it's, it's very different than like being on stage and having an actual audience there in the same room with you. You know, here's just me and my, my video phone and hoping that this is all coming out good. So I have faith that it will and I can only think that I will get better as I do more and more of these. So that is my history with the union. I'm a proud member of sag after for 25 years and counting. It's, you know, it's always been a passion of mine, so I am very fortunate that I was able to do what I want to do and, and, and make a decent living at it. So, leave your comments, let me know what you think, let's have more conversation on this, and be on the lookout for In the Heights and West Side Story, which I think come out next year now. Again, I'm in the background, so who knows if you'll see me or recognize me, I might just be a blur, but I am... Uh, fortunate and proud enough to say that I was a part of these two iconic films that heavily featured Hispanic people. Yay, Hispanics! <laughs> All right, guys, I love you so much. Thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to the next time. And remember, life is too important to be taken seriously, so laugh all you can. It's good for the soul and it keeps you young at heart. Love you. Bye.